What's up, friends and listeners? You're about to hear a new episode of Disrupting with Ashley Holt. That would make me Ashley Holt. (laughs) Thank you for stopping by. Disrupting is about people who are quite literally allergic to the status quo in our world. They have to make a shift or a change when they see something that needs changing. So those are the conversations I'm having with my favorite social media follows, experts, maybe a celebrity or two could pop up. We're going to manifest that together. And just some of my friends that I know were doing a amazing work for the world around us. I'm so excited for you to hear these conversations. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your favorite platform so you get notifications about new episodes and leave comments for me. I love your feedback. Let me know what questions you want to ask, who you want me to reach out to for an interview so that we can get started on disrupting the things in this world that we need to change together. Alessandra Conti. We have spoken many times on television This is people who listen or like watch the teasers I post will see that I'm not at home. I'm in a hotel. This is an emergency situation. Ashley, where are you though? Where are you? I'm literally in Chicago. I'm not at home. Well, I am Chicago's home, but like not where I live right now. Like, because we had to talk about this finale and I had to talk about it with you specifically. I was just telling you, I have notes on my phone. I was watching because I knew I would get to talk to you. So thank you so much. Usually I do bios for people, Alessandra, matchmakers in the city, matchmaker extraordinaire, which is featured on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, helping Sutton Strack find love. Sutton gave you props. Sutton is a tough nut to crack. And she gave you your props. So I want to like, we'll get into everything, but I'm just so excited to have you here. So Alessandra, welcome to Disrupting. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. No, Ashley, it's so good to talk to you. Yes, we have so much to unpack. And yeah, I was so shook for the finale of Love is Blind. Yeah, Housewives was amazing. I mean, Sutton is, Sutton, I know she comes off on screen as, you know, a, a certain way, but She is a doll and she has been such a pleasure to matchmake. And I saw such a huge transformation from even episode one of filming with her, then just all the way to her second date with Steve. And then, I mean, more happened behind the scenes and it was, it was good. um, But, you know. And for people who don't watch, so Sutton went through a divorce, like had children with this man um very wealthy man so money is no object to her she just wanted to find someone to be happy but she had lots of like a lot of us do she had a checklist that she presented to you and you were like pump the brakes (laughs) like we gotta look for love here's how we do that and so she her first date wasn't bad but wasn't great so then you sent her out with somebody else they went on a couple dates and she enjoyed it having time with him and I know and I felt so badly about the for her first match was um Sal and he is probably the purest human being like protect so Sal yes. all like yes. but I all I just think that certain people I always say this men who are great at dating are typically not great at relationships so men that are not great at dating are usually wonderful at relationships so it's like the inverse of what you would think and so the skill set that you need to be an amazing dater it's a different skill set that you need to be a part of a healthy long-term committed relationship so sal is the perfect example of somebody who you know on a first date is like telling a story about his mom and like you know right kind of botching the botching the date and if you don't have this knowledge and if you're going to you know it's difficult that's why I'm excited that you're here people who have been listening to the podcast obviously can tell by now that I didn't start it the way that I usually do you obviously are a disruptor to me in your space because I feel like you are a healthy balance of the modern day woman but also you understand that there are traditional values that have to play into dating for people to be successful And I love that you speak on that and that you will, I've done podcasts with you before where I had like uh, co-hosts with me that were men where you were like, no, I understand why you're saying that, but no. (laughs) So like, I love that about you, that you're firm in how you know what works because you've seen it with so many different types of people. So that's why I'm excited to talk to you. So I'm actually calling this episode disrupting your regularly scheduled programming because it's not a normal episode. We are we are talking about you, but you're here as an expert to help us break down something that like literally is breaking a lot of other people down. So we're going to go through it. 
And I want to go through it by, I was going to say couple by couple, but some of it is like three people and like some of it is like square and whatever. So we're going to get into like this season and the reunion at time of recording. The reunion just aired yesterday. That was the Wednesday. So I want to start, they started the reunion when we finally got to the couples, which I won't get into like how I felt about the format because it was a lot of other things other than what we wanted to see. But the first couple that we got into was Jeremy and Laura. Jeremy oh. shared location. Oh, the and, most toxic. I think the I most mean, toxic men in society openly share their location. I feel like a man who, I feel like, honestly, I'm going to say this, Ashley. I think it's a red flag if a man <laughs> shares his location because they are doing something shady and but they want it to appear as they're not like so they're being they're overcompensating for shady behavior i'm gonna say it i i'm gonna say it and nine times out of ten ashley nine times out of ten when a man shares his location they're doing something's up and you're Something saying if they share it unprompted like you didn't ask they were just like here is that what you're saying? I think that if a man refuses to share their location, that's also toxic. But I think if a guy is like, if a guy is the person to say, hey, I, I here's my location. Like, well, let me get your location. Let's share our locations. I just, listen, I've been a matchmaker 11 years and this whole sharing location thing just started about two years ago. And every single time in date coaching that a bachelorette, pro like we process somebody like a past relationship she's like well you know he shared my location and, it my... and then it's 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 just always toxic really well i, I mean, never realized that but if a woman is like hey babe can you share your location and i want to share mine it's different and yes there is right. a double standard and i know that this is a hot take but it's true L like any ladies listening have their like what do the what do the people have to say I mean, I don't think I'm wrong. No, and here's the thing. I feel like any man who says there is not a double standard has something to hide. <laughs> like, yes. men just know that socially they move different because I always joke about the patriarchy, but we do live in a patriarchy. So they just get away with more in society because it's socially acceptable. And I can have that conversation with men in relationships and they can openly admit that it's the men with things to hide that are like, what are you talking about? You're insane. So I, I don't think that should be a hot take. I think it is talk it's a hot take to toxic people that's what yeah I okay yeah cool. yeah yeah and to that point laura was saying jeremy deemed jimmy the most toxic on this season but does that make it jeremy is he projecting like was jeremy the most toxic like man or woman just human this season well i think jeremy was but i also my heart broke when i saw the whole trevor situation because mm. i didn't know about the girlfriend texts and i was i was such a trevor stan i was like Ooh. after i saw i followed trevor i was like oh my gosh bless this man like da 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 then i saw and i was like whoa um, but I think also Trevor, I like that he acknowledged that he was toxic and that he was in a toxic relationship. <laughs> However, it didn't seem, it just, it seemed like he got this opportunity to go on a TV show. He took it. Things kind of went out, got, got out of hand. And he was like, oh, all right, well, backup plan. My, you know, the girl waiting at home for me. But back to Jeremy, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I think Jeremy is a, um, he seems very like a manipulative yes. human being and he seems very um almost like pathological in yes. a way and almost like sociopathic yes. however you know he just the the level of like he has no shame in anything that occurred and just his but you can also see that this is the thing. I mean, he's super logical and he's super unfeeling and just very, that that's the way he is. And that was kind of the dynamic with him and Laura's, Laura, right? Laura, yeah. I'm so, I'm, okay, yeah, Laura, Um, him and Laura's, I was super into the show. I'm just really bad at names. No, um, me but too. I learned them for this interview because yes, I'm just describing you. people. Yes. 
blast. But yeah, I mean, I think I think that that was the way their interactions. I mean, I didn't personally feel warm and fuzzy in their react in their interactions, like in the pods and then seeing them after. Um, it was very logical. Um, so it makes it doesn't surprise me that this is the way he's handling everything and that he made that comment doesn't surprise me at all. Um, it just he is he definitely is a villain. And that's okay. I think he should own it. Yeah, and lean in like past villains have. And I feel like that's maybe yeah. the biggest mistake. Yeah, like lean in. I mean, I and and also, yeah, I, I just I think that there's a disconnect emotion. There's an emotional yes. disconnect that he's lacking something. Um, and it might be he very well may be a psychopath, you know. And we're not like, doctors. I don't know what I have to say legally. We're not doctors. We're just yeah, yeah. We're not. We're, we're just, because I yeah. feel like if you watch reality okay. TV, you have at least a bachelor's of psychology because we're watching people, human behavior all day long. So I'm just going to put that out there. People with psychology degrees don't come for me. It's kind of a joke, but kind of not. But yeah. I need you to settle something for me because they did not get to the bottom of this. And this is an, another reason why I want you here. I feel like last night's reunion was one of the better ones for the show because they're critiqued often for not holding people's feet to the fire. It still didn't like answer a lot of questions. Like I think TMZ said there were still more questions than answers. So I know that you'll give me answers. That's why I love having you here. Is there any chance in this world or another planet that Jeremy and Sarah Ann were just talking until 5.30 in the morning? This is the thing. I, I think that there is a chance because yeah, I actually, I don't, I, I listen, I understand that it's difficult to like get on that train. However, they spoke, they're so self-indulgent and yes. they, you know, you know, when you meet those people that are just so theoretical and so, you know, they're so kind of in a way not holier than thou but it, but just I can't I don't see them having crossed that line just the way because in because Jeremy then he can stand on that he can be like no we did not cross that line however everything else was it was inappropriate right. which I, I do think that he said I don't I I actually genuinely don't think that they got physical. However, I do think that it was like this is what they do. They're talkers. They they're talking talking talking. And like anybody that like he, you know, exactly. I'm I'm really really, you know, being hard on Jeremy, but I think it's well deserved. He has something there's something going on there cuz there's something missing there with her too. Like yeah. The fact that all the other women could figure it out, some of them in similar situations, but she just, the way they went about it, and that was the one thing they could agree on last night, like, the way they went about it was just not. A hundred percent, exactly. It wasn't even the word, it just wasn't, you just didn't consider anybody else, really. They, yeah, they were completely, yeah, it was, there was no considering anyone's feelings, but I think that that's how, you know, people like that, that operate they're not considering anyone else's feelings I'm kind of like also a human lie detector so a lot of times I know when people are lying and I I so I that that would be my based on everything that I've seen from them like they're because there are tells when people lie and like their baseline and they were you know they were, I think they were lying they were definitely lying initially about the logistics of it but I I don't think that they like slept together or you know does Laura have anything to own here because a lot of people saw her as a mean girl I didn't see her that way but I also am not the person to judge on that because you know I I'm a straight shooter too so I understood everything Laura said at every moment and everything she felt but did she make a misstep here too that she needs to own I mean I think with Laura I I, I think her I think it's important to remember when you're in the weeds of a relationship like they were it kind of took a nasty turn in just in the way that they were communicating with each other that I think we all saw. Um, it, I, 
I think that there needs to be a tenderness and a respect level, even if you are, you know, pick if you even if your your dynamic is banter, like your your dynamic is that you banter and it's like you're making fun of each other. But I feel as though like a few lines were crossed just even in the basics of what we saw. Um, so I think it's important for somebody with a sharpness like Laura, who I really like Laura, but I think it's important for her to, you know, just not go for the jugular quite as much in her. I, that's what, what I would say it, in, in observing that relationship. You weren't a fan of kick rocks with open and toed shoes on is what you're telling me her. Well, I, no, no, no. I liked the, after he betrayed her, I, it's her game. It is fair. A thousand percent. I just mean during their relationship, like during their, Uh even like when they were just bantering, not at the end, once the breakup happened, like it doesn't, you know, it is what it is. You say what you need, say what you need to say, then you can be as sharp as you want. But I think like during their relationship, it's just their dynamic was not a loving dynamic. Yeah. It was a very kind of volatile relationship. So that, you know, then, you know, he's going to, you know, fun, loving and sweet, Sarah, Sarah Ann, Sarah Ann. Wait, what's the yeah. other one's name? Yeah, the- you're right. Wait, is it Laura and Sarah Ann? Yeah, Laura, Sarah Ann. And she's, oh, this love. So, I mean, it's just, but at the same time, you know, it's not her fault at all, right. at all. It just, I wasn't a fan of their dynamic. And I don't think that positive relationships come from when couples get volatile like that. Even her parents made a comment like, hey, like you guys are really going at it. Like yes. this is a little- I forgot that. You're so right. You're so right. Okay. I want to move on. Um, well, I, I feel bad <laughs> because, well, okay. I'm not there. I'm not to them yet. I was going to say, I feel bad that like people aren't talking about Amy and Johnny as much. Like I even like, like had to like look up their names because it's like they were like so loving and like positive not that everything was perfect but like everyone is so into the mess but I'll get into them later because I'm trying to go in order Clay and AD have won the internet maybe not love but like I've seen I have not seen anyone talk about any couple more I mean Jimmy and um Chelsea are close obviously they're competing for who the internet's talking about more but there's so many layers here. So I'm trying to, I'm going to try to not spend like 30 minutes just on them. Um, Clay left her at the altar. And here's the thing. I definitely was sad the first time watching it. Cause like seeing her heartbroken was terrible and she ignored red flags for sure. Like, I'm not saying like, I think Clay is mostly the problem, but she for sure ignored red flags and her mom encouraged her to, which is a whole other thing. But he comes to the reunion and says, I made a mistake. This is the love of my life. Is that possible? Like, can you look someone in the eye and say, can't marry you today, but you're the love of my life down the road? Is that a thing? Okay. I don't think he knew. I don't think he fully grasped the full scope and implications like, and the results of saying no. Like, I don't think right. that in his mind, in his mind, he was saying he, I, I I do think he like choked. Like, I think he had, it was a, it was literally a game time yes. in the moment. Like he was saying that, that it was like four hours for him or three days or whatever. What would he meant? What he talked about, like the actual wedding. So I think think that he allowed that he got cold feet I think he allowed that anxiety um and that you know that fear to just overtake and say no in that moment um but then he did say some really hurtful things about AD like he remember like at the you know after he said no he was like it's just she's I love her she's great but it's not my wife or whatever he said it's just I'm not attracted to like whatever not deeply in love and I was like yes yeah like when did that not align but I I think it just goes back to this is a guy that has not matured and that can sway so easily and I agree with him he in no way is ready to be married because he's not ready I completely agree 
I also, there were so many red flags in that relationship. Um, like him basically saying like, I'm going to cheat on you. And he may have already been cheating on her because any, I think he was, I, I mean, just to be completely, yeah, I think he was cheating on her the entire engagement. Um, I know another hot take having worked with thousands of single men and women with all kinds of issues and all of that over the past 11 years, that man, I mean, if a, the, the statistics of if somebody is traveling for work, that's when cheating happens. Like, uh, so I think that, remember he would always go and he would yeah. stay over randomly at these yeah. different locations. And then I think that this guilt within him was, I think it, the guilt was what made him say no, ultimately, um, if I could pinpoint it. And what I have seen, um, is before the wedding episodes came out, there were like this, um, young lady made a TikTok where she like saw clay at like her college bar with his friends and she was like clay is not married clay is not married he is very single she didn't say that like oh he was flirting or anything but like she showed a picture there were a bunch of girls around him and i'm just like yeah okay but and so what's interesting about it is like this whole we got to literally see generationally what was passed down to him like obviously on the internet that people have been joking about like cheating is not hereditary like obviously but he clearly was carrying the weight of what his dad had done to his mother and ad made a comment at the reunion that i thought was really powerful which was she said watching their wedding was closure for her because she was trying to fix someone who was carrying somebody else's stuff. So yeah. she logically in her brain is like, I can't fix everybody and I don't want to end up like his mom, which I think probably came off more harsh than, than she meant it to. But like, yeah. and I'm sure you come across this all the time. So my question to you is, what is the difference between a man? Because he had a beautiful moment with Brett Brown from last season where he was yeah. like, you know, Brett, the kind of husband Brett was, I knew I couldn't do that. So I was telling AD, I can't give you, I can't be Brett Brown. But what was powerful was Brett said, well, I didn't have amazing influences either. And my parents' relationship wasn't awesome either. What is the difference between a man who is aware of his past, but is it making it his present versus a man who is stuck there, can't process it? Like, how do you tell the difference between the two and what's different about them? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that it comes with maturity, self-growth and doing the work and also living a virtuous life and having faith. Like he has no faith in himself. Clay has no faith in himself. And that's, he had faith in AD a thousand percent, but this man has so little faith in himself. So he has to build a relationship with himself based on virtue. Um, you know, I know he like talked a bit about, uh, you know, I, he's Christian. So he like, you know, he brought out some Bible verses and stuff like that, but it's one thing that's to like bring out learn in church, by the way, that was, the yeah, story. exactly. Exactly. Like it's one thing to bring that out. It's another thing to live your life in a manner that you're proud of. And that's the big difference because I'm sure he wants to be that kind of man, but he's not living as that man he's not living in his virtue he's not and men will always tell you they will tell you that's what when a man exactly when a man says something believe him when a man tells you who he is shows you who he is believe him and that's and he knows he's not living in that manner and maybe he wasn't living in that matter up to the pods and then all of a sudden he you know had this big transformation I don't believe that. I think the second he got out of the pods, he was back on the streets doing what he has done for many years. And yes, that is, it is something that he saw in his past, but this is not an excuse. Like it's an explanation, but it's not, it, it explains it, but it doesn't excuse it. So I think that it's important as women, as a woman dating to, you know, not just jump right in, you know, if a man is like, yeah, I really want to get married. Oh, it's okay. That's great. Let's take a look. Like, how is this man living his life? Wow. And, you know, is he like, you know, staying over on little work trips all, you know, when it's not that inconvenient, yes, just, you know, yeah. Like what's good. What, like, what is that? No. So, 
And what, what is he doing to better himself? Yeah. Therapy is great. But do you, you know, if, if you're a Christian woman is the man that you are with, is he, you know, active in his church community? Is he going to church every day? Is he doing some kind of self-growth every single day? How is he building himself? How is he building his mindset? How, is he, how is he building his relationship with God? You know, how is he developing himself as a man? Because if you're going to tout Bible verses, you need to back that up. Otherwise, you know, no. So, you know, yeah, Bible verse in the Instagram bio is not going to do it anymore. But that's also why I think as, as, as women, I think it's so important when you're dating to see the true, like really see somebody's character and are they a rock or are they like, are they wishy-washy? Pebble. Are they flip-flopping? Yeah. Are they a pebble? Exactly. <laughs> You a pebble or you a rock? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? And I think he just, I don't think he's, I don't think he's a rock. I think he has a lot of work to do. Maybe he did it over the last year. Good for him. That's beautiful for him. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's so heartbreaking because their connection was incredible. But he's also young. I mean, for a lot of, he, how old is he? 30? Yeah. Yeah, he's 30. Like for a lot of men, they, I think like I've seen just as a matchmaker, men coming in at like 36, 37. Oh like, man. Yeah. That, but I, well, I think that I think 36, 37 is a better age in, in terms of emotional maturity. That's what I found. Like we get a lot of men, 36, 37, 38, like they're just in a different headspace. 30 is tough. It's tough. It's Which tough. is annoying because women at 30, we like I'm 30, obviously, I don't feel young. Like I feel like that's when I'm not there yet, but I'm on the cusp of it. That's when the clock starts ticking. And for men, they're like, oh no, I just started making big money. I finally, you know what I mean? I finally have everything I've ever wanted. I'm gonna live this life. That's kind of how it feels or looks, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's definitely advisable for a woman early 30s date 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 like late 30s 40s is fine but I think late 30s is great for an early 30s woman but I think like dating age to age is tough because men are 90 percent of the time they're they just emotionally mature later than women do it is what it is and I do genuinely believe that clay didn't realize like he obviously knew he was impacted by his parents relationship but I don't think he really understood the depth of how it impacted him until this show and I don't think his mother realized it either uh Miss Rita has been an internet sensation Clay's mom what did you make of her conversation with Clay's dad because so many people were impacted by that I was one of those people I've watched a hundred times I could probably recite it as a one-woman play when you watched it what did it represent to you yeah, I mean, I think it was she was amazing. She would yeah, she was the best part of that whole episode. Um, possibly the season. But yeah, I mean, I I think it was just so poignant. And then even what AD said, like respectfully, I don't want to be like your mom in, yeah. in that experience. But I don't think that Clay is full blown his dad. Oh. Um, because dad yeah and I was I I I was on uh love is blind t- talk whatever I don't even have to, I do have TikTok but I don't even use it but like it got into my reels and I saw all of these like explanations about Clay's dad like being the poster child for like narcissistic personality disorder again I am not diagnosing these people um oh my, I like you, we did diagnose oh. Jeremy for sure <laughs> oh yeah Jeremy for sure no 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 bless oh my gosh bless you Jeremy um But no, I mean, I think that I think like that, but you see so many of it, even in his interaction with Clay and then with the mom. um, Yeah, I mean, it was just it was a beautiful moment. And it was yeah, it was like, yeah, you had me, but you didn't treat me well. So it was good to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that it was a moment for them both because Clay's mom was crying, obviously, when AD left, gave her a hug. And you could tell that she was, she made it clear that she wasn't disappointed or frustrated with Clay. You could tell that, like, she realized how much healing needed to happen. And she didn't know until he 
literally almost like malfunctioned on the altar because watching it back a second time, knowing he's going to say no is even wilder because he's still like calling her baby. He's looking her dead in her eyes. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like it just do all of that and know the whole time. I don't know that you can. I don't think I, like you said, and like he said, I don't think he knew until he literally was like, oh man, I got to decide now, which is like, yeah, he needs to build himself as a man because if, a, if a, he needs to build himself as a man, because a decision, when you have a strong character, decisions are easy when like, if they mm. just are, when you have a strong character, decisions are not difficult. Wow. Sorry. That's it. That's right. So yeah, he needs to, he needs to build himself self-love stuff because also men that have a strong sense of self of virtue of values of core values of self-discipline like uh, he has work ethic I'm not he can get there but he has so much work to do and it's not just in therapy it's not just talking to a therapist it is actual living your life in a way that you are making yourself proud every single day and you are resisting temptations you're resisting your urges you're resisting whatever it was that your dad did that he got away with you're not living because when you're operating in that shameful space you can't you you can't you can't accept love so he has a lot of work to do a lot of men do a lot of women do too a lot of people do for sure (laughs) And I think, and I, okay, I love that point because I think on the internet, you know, we all joke about how people say like there's piss in the dating pool and whatever. And I agree with that, obviously, but I think it comes across like, because women are, I I will say this subjectively, better able to express ourselves, more willing to grow and work with someone if we think that they are actually dedicated to us. Um, But I think it comes across like we feel like women don't have work to do. And I don't think that's true, but I do think that women are willing to do the work for a man who's willing to do the work. And I think that's where, at least generationally, we're getting stuck. And I don't know if you see that. Uh, Yeah, I mean, and I, I also, I think that for a lot of women, the emotional burden of not doing the work is like, it's not it's not sustainable. Like women are so emotional and like, we just feel a lot. We feel in a different way than men do. So for men, you know, the focus society's focus is, is, you know, make money, be a provider, you know, like that's the focus that they have. So they can almost put it off in a way because they can focus on these other elements that, that ultimately they think is going to fill that hole of like, yeah, yes, yes. They're like, oh, I feel this way because of X, Y, Z, because I need to get, you know, I need to make more investments. I need to get a better career or I need to be like, they, they think that that's going to be the fix to that feeling of inadequacy, emptiness, like, like all of the bad stuff, those low feelings, but with women, it's different because yes, of course, women, you know, want to do wonderfully in their careers and want to excel, but it's, it's also so, um, attached to like relationships. And so I think that in order for, I think women hit a certain point where they're like, I, I need to do this work on myself because I'm feeling super unfulfilled and like the, and my goal is this. So I, I just think, I think it's a gender difference. And I think that, yeah, I I think women hit it, uh, hit it in a different way than men do. And a bit earlier than men do a lot of times. That's just my thought. No, I, I feel that. And I, this is why, you know, there's no way to like have a politically correct conversation about this, right? Like obviously <laughs> people are going to like, I don't know how you do your job because it, I can admit like people come in with such different like value sets and you're, but it's like, at the end of the day, the patterns are what, what they are. Do you know what I'm saying? The patterns like, are what Ashley, the patterns are what they are. Yeah. Okay. And this is, I mean, people should have known because I talk about love is blind every day on the internet when it's on. So this will obviously be the longest episode I've ever had, which <laughs> Um, because we still haven't talked about Chelsea, Jimmy, and Jessica. 
Um, and this is probably my biggest critique of the reunion is that we didn't like, and I was talking to one of my friends about this and she made this point. She's totally right. We heard more about Jimmy and Jessica than we heard about Chelsea and Jimmy. And I was like, I didn't, I felt resolve about Jessica and Jimmy. Like that's not a couple, they were never a couple, but that's not a dynamic I think about. I want to know about the implosion of Chelsea and Jimmy because on social media, it appears that they're still together and they at least as far as we saw we're not even asked are you still together so I think that that's number one the biggest disappointment for me but why do you think the dynamic between Chelsea and Jimmy was so unhealthy toxic and I feel like they both wanted it to work and it just seemed like it could not work what did you see Oh my goodness. Yeah. This couple was such a mind, you know, mind F like it really was. Um, I just have this deep feeling that Chelsea did not feel like Jimmy was her man. Like, you and I think, think? that, that's, yeah, I, I think that Chelsea was second guessing from the second she said Yes, I think she was a Trev the Trevor of it all and just thinking uh, thinking about Trevor, thinking about this and I think her that combined with her insecurities and yeah, coming into a relationship with all of those insecurities. It's kind of like a clay but in a female clay that is just you can't hide. Like she couldn't mask those yeah. insecurities she yeah. just couldn't she tried you can't you can just do it for so long but they just came screaming out and exactly like the fact that her counter her like nemesis in it not even nemesis because they're besties now which is bizarre yeah, auntie chelsea <laughs> i know auntie chelsea my goodness um but yeah i mean i think that just jessica being as stunning physically as she is and as self-assured as she is it's kind of like the antithesis of what Chelsea is but what Chelsea wants to be it felt like Chelsea was using every minor opportunity to kind of throw a like a little sabotage in there because I think deep down she was not sold on on the Jimmy of it all because she needs she even was like you don't tell me I'm beautiful you don't tell me I'm this you don't tell me I'm that like th this is yes it's Chelsea's insecurity but also there is I, I just think that she was like picking I think she was picking fights because I think she just was I, I think she was regretting her decision and not getting enough from Jimmy and like he's just to me oh my gosh Jimmy bless his little heart just like the wettest of mops, like just a wet freaking mop. Like, I just, I don't understand the appeal. Bless his heart. And Jimmy, I'm so sorry if you're listening to this. I'm sorry I too. It's metaphorical. It's yes, it is. And I know how that is also having been on Housewives and like listening to a podcast that, because I watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, like just generally. And I was listening to a podcast and like somebody said something not so nice about me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. So I understand. Listen, yeah. I understand. Well, I am being too harsh. Point. Yes, I'm very, I'm being very harsh, but I just, the fact that this man was the center of the most like these total opposite feminine energies like that are yeah yeah well, I mean respectfully he seemed to struggle with it too like Jeremy yeah. didn't have a problem with it but like Jimmy was just kind oh, of yeah. like, stressed like I don't even know what is going on here and I think my issue with him was um it seemed like because Jess, Jess is right. Like he never really like expressed an emotion to her, which was very bizarre because she was like pouring her heart out and he was, he would like pull a bachelor and be like, thanks for sharing. And it's like kind of strange. Like, if you don't like me, tell me, but like, it seemed like he wanted someone that he felt was more docile and that he could kind of like be dominant and control a bit. And the second he found out from Jessica that he couldn't control her, he was completely like, numb and like couldn't figure out how to tell her like this isn't going to work for me because it really didn't make sense that it wouldn't work for him outside of that that she was just well-spoken and straight shooter that's what I saw at least yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yes, that and like, I think there was a common theme that he kept kind of going back to of lifestyle of like, like when you when she expressed that she had a child when Jessica expressed that she, he, it was like, there was a shift, there was a very distinct shift. And then he would consistently bring up um, with um, uh, what's her name? The the Megan Fox. Um, Chelsea. With Chelsea. Yeah, there he would he would bring up in the pods like just about how you know what a fun carefree lifestyle they would have. She's a flight attendant, travel like mm -hmm. that. I think also in when he developed very strong connections with both of them. So a tipping point. What I saw was very lifestyle based. That would be my assessment of of those connections. And I and I so yeah. I mean. I don't, I don't personally view Jimmy as this toxic psychopath at all. I think he's a, I think he's a feeler. And I think this experience really emotionally like affected him and kind of destroyed him. Um, and I also think like something that I think is fascinating is that um, he like it, people are so different, right? Like with some of the men in the pods, they were like, well, I, I fell in love with her because she was upfront with me. She told me how much she liked me. But then other men would be like, you know, Jessica poured her heart out to Jimmy. She was like, you're the one. I love you so much. Like, da, 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 like you know, not I love you, but you're basically this is I saved this letter for my future husband. Here it is. So all that to say, it's people are so different, whereas Chelsea didn't do that. Chelsea did not express all of her feelings for him. So it created that kind of more of that chase dynamic. Whereas with some of the other men and women in the pods, they didn't like that. So it's so like, there's no one size fits all to this, like to courtship, to expressing and all of that. But yeah, I didn't see Jimmy as like super toxic. I just, I just think he was in over his head. I just think he... He's a simple guy. And I think this was like yes. a lot. And I was yeah. just going to say that I feel like Jimmy went in there wanting a good old fashioned marriage from the fifties and sixties. Like I, that's what I saw now, yeah. because what threw me off was, I don't even know that he really could comprehend what an emotional connection is. He was just like, to your point, who could fit into the life I see for myself? Because yeah. his entire proposal to Chelsea was about him. I love how you make me feel. You make me laugh. Yes. Like, and that stuck out to me for reasons I will not share here, but I was like, you didn't say anything that you like about her, just like what she can do for you. And I just also was, it was so strange that he was always telling everybody, like, I think we're the number one couple here. I think we're happier than everybody. And it's like, one, even if that was true, which it never was, why do you want to tell us that? Like, why do you, why do you keep saying it? It's almost like you don't really believe that, but why, who do you want to believe that really? You know, Jimmy did even express like, you know, yeah, Jessica, you're, you were, you know, absolutely. So, so there was definitely, he was totally pushing down Yeah, a lot. There was a lot, there was a lot being pushed, a lot of that. So but I oh. do believe that he didn't, he genuinely never saw a life with Jessica. Like, I don't think that. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. I don't think agreed. he had any like dying need to like go to have lunch with her one on one. Like, I don't think that they, I think Jessica, for whatever reason, had felt that more than he did, which is yeah. incredible to me. Yeah. Um, and you her. were talking about lifestyle, like how Jimmy saw a lifestyle with Chelsea and didn't see one with Jessica. What are the non-negotiables? Like you talked about religion earlier, but like when you are dating someone, what are because obviously there are things you know you're going to have to compromise on and figure out together. But what are things that like you feel like people stick to their guns on and it works for them? Hundred percent. So in eleven, almost twelve years of being a professional matchmaker, the three deal breakers that absolutely have to be present in a relationship, otherwise it is doomed for failure, are do they want to get married mm -hmm. and like within kind of a similar a similar chapter time frame. Um, do they want to have kids? And again, kind of in that similar time frame, and is religion compatible? Mm. Religious compatibility, it doesn't have to be the same exact religion. Like if somebody's Catholic, they don't have to be with 
a Catholic person that's practicing exactly within, they could be with a Christian person or whatever, or a Jewish person, like if they're, but it has to be compatible. Like if somebody is a devout Muslim with, you know, somebody that is a practicing Christian, a lot of times it's not going to, you know, be the easiest relationship and it can be, it can really be incredibly challenging um, down the line. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are the three deal breakers that absolutely have to be present, um, in a, it, that I've just seen in matchmaking for all of these years. And if one of those is not aligned, it's just, it's just not going to work. Yeah. And you have dropped, well, first of all, my jaw has dropped at least three times throughout our conversation here today, but I want to leave people with something because I feel like so many people saw themselves like I, people who don't get reality TV, I feel so bad for you because we are having a blast. And I feel like it's because, like you said, we can see these characters easier than we can see what's going on in our own lives and like what we're doing wrong. So like, I always want to make it a learning experience, but for people who are in a rut in dating and they are genuinely trying to figure out what am I doing wrong? Am I the problem or how can I improve? What are some ways that you encourage people to look inward when they're ready to do it? Because if you're not ready to do it, then you're not going to do it and no one can force you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so important to take a step back and even do a dating cleanse. Um, I think a lot of times people think it's like, oh, let me just go, let me, let me go on a million dates. And it's just, it's just, I'm not, I haven't met the right person yet. And let me just keep on, I'm on all the apps. Let me just line up a bunch of dates and like just date, 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 date. I would say take a break. You need to take a, do a dating cleanse, really focus inward and establish pillars in your life um, and truly develop core values. Um, and because you need to go into dating, dating is not easy. Dating is filled with rejection, uncertainty, um, confusion. It's, it, it's filled with all of those things, but it's also filled with fun and flirting and, um, energy and masculine energy, feminine energy, being your best self, being your not so best self, like learning, growing all of that. But I think especially if you are in a space where you're like, I want to meet my person, like I really do. Um, but something it's not working. Something is not working. I'm getting super anxiously attached when I meet somebody that I really like. And then I, then I end up freaking out and I ruin everything because I send them a weird text or, you know, like, or I, I just keep meeting the same guy over and over and over the, 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 the person that we need to, we need to establish is yourself. So take a dating cleanse, do a two month dating cleanse and develop a practice, a daily, multiple daily practices around whatever is something that is core to you. For me and for a lot of women that I work with is like they're Christian or even they're Jewish and they're, um, and they're, you know, they, and they want to align with values that are aligned with that. And they want to live in that way. Um, So it's developing, you know, practices just surrounding that, but also self-love and just building yourself up and self-growth and self-development and self-empowerment and being around, you know, joining a women's group, um, volunteering. Um, I know this sounds cheesy, but it's, it's really what has to be done. And then a lot of times I find that when I encourage women and men to do this they end up meeting people organically that are it's like it's just an organic a more organic way of meeting somebody other than you know the dating apps that are just like oh let me put somebody in front of me but I think just building yourself up and just gaining resilience and knowing who you are knowing what your values are knowing what your boundaries are being very clear with who you are, what your dreams are, what your passions are, where your fire is. It's not attached to somebody else. It needs to be, it it needs to be fanned by somebody else, but, you know, just getting very clear on those elements, I think is just essential. And then the right partner is going to just arrive in the most beautiful way. It always does. He always does. But it's just having that hope, knowing he's coming, he's coming. And, but you need to prepare and be the woman, be an amazing woman or an amazing man that 
is is a partner for that person, you know? Yeah, I was, uh, my very first podcast episode was with Dr. Ebony, a licensed psychologist, and she talked about alignment. And that's what it sounds like you're talking about, where it's like, when you focus your life down to who you really are, then you're only going to be around people 85% of the time that align with you. And then your person has to be in there somewhere. (laughs) You know, it's like when your net is too wide and your life isn't aligned and focused, you could meet any crazy person. And that's, this. that's why dating stories are insane, you know? So I, I, that message connecting is, is really cool. And it will be so obvious when somebody is not right. And like, it's so obvious when, when, when somebody's in alignment, it's like the most obvious thing. And the universe, and I'd say the creator of the universe, ha- like has a way of putting these little test people in your in your life as like, oh, did you really master this? Like, I know I gave you this I little lesson. <laughs> yeah, like, did we did we master this yet? And then it's like, then you do master it. And then you're yeah. like, whoa. I have context. I mastered that. I saw those red flags immediately. I I got a little emotionally connected, but not too much. I extricated myself and I remained just pure in myself, you know? Um, And so, yeah, because the tests are not, they're not going to end until it's, until it's time, but then it will be miraculous. So don't, not to fear, be not afraid. Like your partner is coming. If you desire, if it is in your heart, that you want to be married, that you want a relationship, you will have one. I've seen it. It's, I, I've been, do, I've been doing this. If somebody wants this, it will happen, but uh, things need to happen. And the wrong people need to be out of the way as quickly as possible. Yeah. And I love that Colleen made that point last night too. She was like, I know Colleen's from the season in Dallas. I can't remember the season numbers, but she was like, I know that what you're sitting in right now feels ridiculous you will make it out and Giannina from season one who had quite the season (laughs) said the same thing like I could not have been here if I didn't go through the madness and so I you know I think that centers a lot of people me included and I appreciate you always for bringing it back to something positive thank you for talking reality tv with me congratulations on Housewives of Beverly Hills whoever talked to crap about you I want to find them present yourself (laughs) Thank you so much. Your spirit is always just light. And I appreciate you being willing to talk to me for disrupting. Of course. Thanks, Ashley.